Welcome to Delphi Labs. My name is Paweł Głowacki and today in a data snap series I'm going to demonstrate using Delphi to pass T object descendants as data snap server methods parameter types and returned values. In the world of Java there is a concept of plain old Java object or POJO as something that you can pass in and out of the enterprise Java bin method. In the world of data snap and Delphi we can, sp we can talk about plain old Delphi objects or PODOs for passing in and out data. So this is something new to Delphi XC and I'm going to build a server and client and demonstrate passing arbitrary T object descendant from a data snap server method. I'm going to build a new data snap server application. So in a data snap server category I'm going to build a standalone data snap server which is going to be a VCL forms application. I'm going to keep the default TCP IP protocol and I'm not going to generate any sample methods as I'm going to uh, implement a, a sample method myself. I'm going to see if the port 211 is open and I'm going to keep T component as a base class of my server methods implementation. Click on finish and I'm going to save everything in a special directory that I have prepared for this demonstration which is called plain old Delphi object params. So this is my main server so this is going to be my form server unit and I'm going to keep the default values for server container unit and server methods unit too as well. So this is my pod server so this is my project. Okay I can even say this is my server PODO server. Okay so I have not asked the wizard uh, to generate uh, any methods on my server methods class because I'm going to implement a method myself. So I'm going to return from this server methods class a T person instance. So I'm going to implement a method that returns a T person class. Okay so first I need to define a T person class. I'm going to add to this unit uh, to this project a new unit empty unit so data Delphi files and just plain unit and I'm going to call it a shared stuff unit so this is also going to be a unit used by my client project so here I'm going to uh, define a new class T person class so let me very quickly do it so it's going to be just a class and this class is going to have two properties so I'm going to define a public value property last name which is going to be of type string and also first name so we have a first name and last name okay control shift C to generate some getters and setters and also what I'm going to do just for convenience I'm going to define a custom constructor so I have a easy way of creating instances of this of this type okay so that's one thing and I'm also going to gener to implement two string functions so this is a this is a function that is uh, inherited from T object so it has to be uh, over override so this is something that was inherited from T object. In fact, if I add a T object here, I can see the definition of this two string method. So I have this uh, two string is defined as virtual and in default implementation just returns a class name. So what I'm going to do in my method, I'm going to just uh, override this method and control shift C and I'm going to first implement my constructor a last and first name is going to be a first okay and to string method is going to be just a result and maybe first name and last name okay so th this looks like a, a good implementation of a basic uh, object that we are going to pass uh, to return from a server method Okay, so I'm going to save this unit. In my server methods unit I need to use this unit, so this is my shared stuff unit. In fact I need to use it in my inter 
interface section and not implementation section. So I can just remove this guy. Okay, so I'm going to implement a method called get person that is going to take two strings, a first and a last. These are strings, and I'm going to return a t person class, t person instance. Control Shift C, and I'm going to result equals t person create. I'm going to just instantiate this object on the fly. So that's very handy constructor. Okay, so that's my server methods uh, implementation. So my my server is now uh, ready. I can actually uh, save uh, save it, and what I can do is run it and minimize it because it has to be running during the implementation of the client. I'm going to add to my uh, server project a client project, so I'm going to VCL Forms application. I'm going to save it in the same directory as I have already uh, used for my server. So this is going to be my form client unit and this is going to be PODO client. Okay. Also I need to save the group, so PDO group, PODO group. Okay. So that's that's my client. So how do I implement client? So the easiest uh, thing uh, to implement it is to use a wizard. So I'm going to select datasnap server. I'm going to add a datasnap client module, a dbx datasnap client module. The wizard asks me if it's a local server. It's a local server. It's a standalone server. It's using TCP IP. The test uh, connection to on port 211 is successful. So now we have a uh, the wizard has generated for us a client module unit and also client classes unit. So notice in the client classes unit we have a class T server methods to client generated and this class has a method get persons that has exactly the same signature as a, as a class uh, on the server. So what we really need to do is just to call this method locally. Okay, let's let's do it very quickly. What I also want to do to make sure that this is all done correctly, I really want to add the shared stuff unit to my client project. In this case, it is optional because both projects are in the same directory, but this is a logical part of the client is to have the shared stuff unit as part of the project because this is where the T person is defined. Okay, let me very quickly uh, implement a little interface, so I'm going to add two edits, one edit for the last name, so this is going to be my name, is going to be the property edit last name, and also I'm going to take this edit and use it as a basis for my edit first name. Okay, so I have edit last name and uh, edit first name. So this is actually when we can actually uh, change the contents uh, of this first name so it actually shows this properly. So I have a first name, edit first name. Okay, that's fine. And I'm going to add a button here, F6T button, that will display, call a method and uh, display what have whatever was returned from the server method. So show person. This is our caption on the button. Okay. So what I'm going to do is also I need to use in the client all the all these new units. So this could be used in the implementation section. So that's not a problem. Okay. So what I can now do is maybe get some more uh, space and implement it. That I'm going to. Uh, First of all, I'm going to define a variable of type t person. So this is what I'm going to use for my return value. And this person, I'm going to use from my client uh, module, uh, client module one dot server methods to dot client dot get person. And in the get person, I'm going to pass uh, edit first name dot text and edit last name dot text. So if everything is okay, after calling this method, I should have 
the insta an instance of p here. So now I can just do it like this: show message p dot to string. Okay. So let me run uh, my client and see if it's actually working. Okay. This sounds like it's working, but shouldn't we actually check if this p is not nil? So it's possible that it's nil. So I, th I think it's a good practice to see if it's not nil. If p is not a nil, then we have to do something. So first of all, we can call show message. Okay, but shouldn't we also take care of memory management of this instance? So let me show you what will happen if I try to free this uh, this instance. Okay, I'm going to this time to run in the debugger and I'm going to do a show person click on OK and close and I'm getting an access violation it looks like this person was already freed so if you look into the server methods implementation there is a concept of instance owner here so this instance owner is set to true in the client module constructor so this is also used in the call to, ser to server methods dot uh, to client constructor when we actually pass the value of instance owner so by default if we look into the implementation if the instance uh, owner uh, is true uh, then we don't have to worry about freeing this uh, person uh, instance okay so this is really not necessary okay thank you very much for watching this episode of data snap Delphi Labs uh, tutorial. Thank you very much.